Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti, and uh, we've been having a good time in the Word. And uh, it brings me this morning to Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, a very popular verse of Scripture that we, uh, well, at least most Scriptures know, uh, excuse me, most Christians know this Scripture. All right. Um, so why don't we just dig in, okay? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans or the thoughts that I think toward you, say of the Lord, and their thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, of course, it moves on, but I want to stay right here today because the whole, the whole purpose of us understanding that God has a plan is the most important thing. Because some people walk around this world and they're saying, I don't know what God has called me to do or I don't know what I was born for. Well, everyone is born for, for some purpose. And God only knows that purpose in its entirety. So if you don't know what you say, you know, you say to yourself, I don't know exactly what God wants me to do. Think about the thing that you love the most. Or if, if you can do something, if you were well off and you could do something for free, what, what would it be? And most likely you, you would understand exactly where God wants you to be. Um, you know, my calling is teaching and music and a lot of other things, but those two primarily are my calling and, and uh, it's something that I do. I don't consider it a job. I, I just enjoy it. I love it. Okay, so now he says, for I, now what's interesting about the word for is a very interesting Hebrew word because it talks about, it's actually this word is something that, uh, it's a burning. You know, like when you, you burn for something? Well, here, God burns for us. Do you know that? You know that God has a desire. His desire is so strong for us. He's so concerned about every little thing in our lives. We, we think about all the big things we do, but God is concerned for the little things in our lives as well. And he burns for this. For I, and of course, what we, we see the word here um, uh, in the Hebrew is anoiki, which is, is, is a singular. It's me. And that's what I love about I, you know, I can never be we. <laughs> I is me. I is you. So here, God personally takes an interest in what he wants you to do. And he has a plan for you. And he has revealed that plan in his word. Personally. That's what I love about it. He sat down. He is the architect of our lives. He is the one that understands the plan. And he has drawn a plan. You see an architect working. He has all his pencils and he has all his uh, tools that he uses to make squares and circles, etc. God understands all and he knows all that he has for you. He has drawn out a plan for you that has all the squares and the diamonds and the circles and every little detail from the door and the windows and how high the building will be and how deep it will go and the foundation and how, how much it's going to take to do this. So there's a lot of planning that has gone into your life to get you started to serve God. So we have no excuse because God knows exactly what he has, and he has laid it out right here. Here's the plan right here, okay? So if you dig into the, into the architect's book, you're going to see exactly what he has for you. And somehow, some way, you say, but I keep searching. Don't stop searching. That's the key, okay? When, you, when you're panning for gold, you don't stop. You keep going until you find a nugget. And when you find one nugget, it gets you hungry for the next. Why? Because if you find one nugget there, there has to be others. And so you kind, you kind of uh, dig in and search until that one verse of Scripture enters into your heart and begins to work on you. Because that verse of Scripture is light, and that light is going to show you the way. For I know. Now, what's interesting is the word know here in the Hebrew is yada. Now, here, let me just give it to you, yada. And yada is a very wide word, but it, it really has three letters that make it happen. Two letters of what it is, but three letters make it happen. Because it has the yud, the dalet, and it has the ayim. Now, what does that mean? These three words have a picture. The ayim basically represents a hand of power. But it always goes back to the origin of where all things begin or began. God created the heavens and the earth. Only he can do that. And what's interesting is what's going to come next. 
So here we see the mighty hand of God, and then we see the dalet, which is a door. Now, the door represents going from one place to another. Isn't that interesting? You, when you enter a room, you open the door, you go into that room. You exit that room, and you go to another room. And there's, there's usually they put doors wherever there are rooms because of privacy. And God has private things for you. Every time he invites you into a door, he wants to show you something that's beautiful. Well, Moses had to climb up to a mountain to get to that door, <laughs> but he saw a light coming through the door. He went up to the mountain, and as soon as he reached where God was stationed, in other words, the bush was burning, here, the first thing God did was is, is to tell him to take his shoes off because he was standing on holy ground. Now, what holy uh, means there is Kadesh, and it means sanctified, something you've never stand on before. And when God calls you to do something, it's always something fresh and new. You know, you can have a person who is um, a builder of a house on this corner, and then another person who's a builder of a house on the next corner, and they're both Christians, and they're both called to build houses. And you say, well, I'm not doing anything new. Yes, God has different ways of showing you what to do than, than, than what's down the block. And so this person may be an expert in building brick buildings but you may be an expert in building glass buildings whatever it is but god has given you a uniqueness because he has drawn out the plan for you and every time you go through a door through obedience god shows you beautiful things because he knows now what's interesting about the word know here again is instruction god knows all the instructions that he has given you in his word and by his spirit so that you can walk in the instruction of his word then of course there's observation so once he gives you instruction you have to now observe this instructions that he's given you because they are particular they're not just any instru instruction they're custom made for you just like every trial is custom made for you you may say, this person has the same, same thing I go through, or the same pain, but it is customized for you because where, where God allows affliction and God allows trials and tribulation on one person's life or in one person's life, it's taking them to another direction from where you're going with that same trial. Because I know the plans that I have for you. And so you must receive instruction from the word. You must observe, but then you must appoint. What does it mean to appoint? It means that you now have to apply yourself to the instruction of your observation. And so we need to go forward and just say, God, okay, I, I have instruction in your word. I have, I've observed what you, know, you called me to do, but now I must appoint myself to that calling. The Bible tells us that Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee after he came out of the desert and he saw Peter and Andrew and they were fishing and he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Then watch this now. He walks a little further and he sees John and James and they, they were doing the same thing with the exception that it says John and James were mending their nets. So notice Peter and Andrew were fishing where John and James were mending. And he calls them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So this is the interesting part. Both have the same call and some believe that they also were working together, but they had a different purpose in life. And when you look later on in the book of Acts, Peter becomes a great spokesman. And Andrew he becomes the person who uh, knows how to draw people to Jesus. He's a, kind of an evangelist, right? And then John and James become leaders of the church. James, who was a mender of the nets with his brother, he gets his head chopped off, and through that, the church begins to come together. Incredible. And how God uses John to become the spokesman in the last days by giving him the book of Revelation. And everything they went through brought them into the perfect plan. For God knew and knows the instruction, the observation, and the appointment of every person's life. Then comes the word diligent. Once you appoint yourself to the plan of God, you must become diligent and not give up. You know, 
when you give up, you're probably just at the breaking point of your victory. So yada is very important because it is the hand of God that takes you through a door. But then there's the ayim, the eye. God allows you to see what you're walking into. God doesn't lead you blindly, folks. God knows exactly what you want. Listen, sometimes we don't understand where we're going and we don't understand how it's going to happen. But God gives us signs. He gives us he gives us instructions so that we can know. Now, let's go back to the word for I know the thoughts. Now, what's interesting is that the word thoughts that I know. Now, the word know. Remember the word yada. He says, for I know. Do you know that there's another word that is injected into this verse or this word, I know, in the Hebrew, and it's the word et. Do you know what that means? That is the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It is the alpha and the omega. It is the very first thing that God places in the first verse. In the beginning, God created et. The heavens, the et, the earth. You know what that means? It means that God spoke the word and the word became the heavens. God spoke the word and the word became the earth. This is the same thing he injects here. For I know, meaning from the beginning of all time, I have a word for you. I have a declaration for you. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of your life. He has it all. For I know the word that I have placed in your life to make you happen. Hello. Then he says the word thoughts here, which is an interesting word because it's kind of a long word. And it's Maka, Maka Shaba, Maka Shaba, Maka Shaba. And the letters are a lot of letters here, but let me just give you what it means. It talks about water that flows into an enclosure and it has pressure. You know, when you put water like in a, in a little pool, you say, oh, it's just a little water. Let me tell you something. You break that little pool. You ever seen the kids pool that they put, they put the kids in the summertime in front of the house or behind the house, wherever they want to put this pool. They fill it with water and the kids play all day and it's a little pool. But if you break that pool open, the water will gush out and there's pressure in that, in that water because it was surrounded by an enclosure, and when you break the enclosure, the force of that water comes out. Well, here, there is water that flows into an enclosure, a fence, okay, a, a closed place, and it has pressure. Watch this. And it represents a house that has windows. Wow. How can that be? Because when God thinks about you, his thoughts, his love, his mercy flows into you, into you, and creates a pressure point in your life that you say, I can't be comfortable here anymore. I have to move on. There's something that is calling me. Have you ever felt that, Rafina? We all felt that, right? You feel like, I got to do something. Watch this. <laughs> we feel like that now because we're getting ready to burst out into something new. But watch this. Then there's a house. Why? Because the word Leb, house, represents the shepherd who has authority over that house. And he has placed windows in your house for you to see where he wants to take you. So I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Now, here's an interesting word because the word that I think toward you, the plans that I think toward you, the thoughts also represents the weaver. Now, I want to say something. When of course, I'm going to say something because I'm here to say it, right? When God came, when, when uh, God brought his people out of Egypt and they, um, they came to the place where he built the tabernacle, he had to make the clothes of the high priest and the priests. And so he told Moses, he gave instruction how to make these clothes. But he said something that's very important. God wanted the apparel to be of one thread, one thread, not many threads, because that thread will represent God and God alone. You see this word here? This word here, though it has 66 books in it, it's only one thread, one thread. Jesus actually mentioned that in John chapter 10, verse 35, when they were accusing him of doing things. And he said, for what, you know, for what works you want to stone me? He says, we don't want to stone you. 
because you did good works, but because you made yourself equal with God. And then he says, haven't you read in the Psalms that ye are gods? And they go on, and a lot of people have taken that verse of Scripture out of context, but I want to put it in context. In context, it says this. Didn't he say that you are gods, meaning that you're the judges of the earth? You're supposed to represent God, the one thread in the Word. And then he says this. I love it. And the Scripture cannot be broken. Notice he didn't say Scriptures. He told them, what has been written about you is one. And that verse of scripture cannot be broken. But yet they took that Christ, the one word from God, and they broke him. Only to realize by putting him in the grave, he would only come back alive, resurrected, and powerful. Okay, he is the great weaver. Now watch this. That one thread that went through the garment is the one thread that God weaves into your life. And I'm going to tell you what that thread is. I know the thoughts, the weaving, the fabrications that I make toward you. Watch this, say of the Lord, thoughts of shalom. Mm. This is the key. And I'm finding in my life that when I make a decision, I'm looking for the thread of shalom in the garment of where I want to go of the place where I want to go, I have to make sure that God's shalom is leading me. There have been times in my life that I made decisions and I thought it was God only to realize I said, man, I've kind of missed it here because you know what? I was anxious. The Bible says be anxious for everything. Does it say that? Nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer, and supplication, let your, let your petitions be made known to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. So when you look at it, think about this. God has weaved and is weaving his peace into your life. Right now, there are people who are watching that you have no peace. You've been going through a lot of things. But know this, that God is weaving his shalom into your life so that, watch this, you would have peace in your decision making. So this way you can think the way God thinks. I know the plans, the thoughts that I fabricate toward you. Just go ahead and read it. Look at it in the Hebrew. Go deep into the root word and you're going to find the word fabrication there. God knows, watch this, I know the garment that I'm weaving for your life. Hallelujah. I know the garment that I'm weaving for your life. And when you put it on, it's going to be sweet peace. And it's a garment, watch this, of kingship. Wow. It's a garment for a queen. It's a garment to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the plan that God has for you to share the word of God wherever you go and not of evil, he said. The thoughts I fabricate toward you are not evil. And believe me, a lot of people believe that God can do evil. When God brings judgment, it's evil in our eyes, but in God's eyes, it is his, it is his mishfat, his judgment, holy judgment. And then he says to give you an expected end. Let's look at the word expected here, which is very interesting. It's a cord used for measuring a straight line. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I love that. That God already has measured out my life. God has already measured out your life. He knows exactly where you're going and what you're going to do. He says, here's the measuring point, and we have it right here in the Word to God us. He says, don't go beyond it, don't go beyond it, and don't stay before it. Get in line with what God has for you. He has a plumb line that He has marked out for you, and that plumb line is a straight line. Now, I want to just share two more verses of Scripture, and then I'm out. John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says something that's powerful just before he's going to the cross. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Watch this now. Look what he does. The great master, the king, the Lord of all the earth says something that is powerful to the disciples. Shalom, I leave with you. My peace, my shalom, I give to you, not as the world gives. The world can give peace. Watch the world's peace. It looks authentic, but there's a lot of confusion in that peace. 
But the Lord says, the shalom I give to you, it is not like the world gives. He says, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you want fear to leave your life, you have to do one thing. You have to trust God's word. Trust that he's leading you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse, and be not wise in your own ayim. Stop looking at things and thinking that you can figure it out. It doesn't work. Watch this. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone yet and yet I am not alone because the father is with me you're all going to leave me you're all going to abandon me when I go to the cross watch this now but these things I have spoken to you that in me you might have shalom in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world. The plans that God has for you is a, is a sure enough plan that cannot fail. All you have to do is what my wife and I spoke about yesterday. Obedience. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say, I come to the seminar, I'm going to show you seven keys to success. Two keys to this. Three. I only know one key if you want to put it that way. And it's obedience. If when you are, well, listen, when you are obedience to God, when you are, when you are, in obedience to God's will, everything will come your way. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. God bless you. Have a wonderful spirit-filled day.